Hey guys, this is Carl Taylor and I'm joined by my incredible co-host Peter Moriarty and this is Entrepreneurs Rising. Um, this is a podcast designed for really, let's be honest, it's designed for us to muse and chat about what we find interesting and we happen to be entrepreneurs and have built successful businesses that give us a lot of time and money freedom. And today we have been the third episode of a fairly new format where we just hit record on whatever we're talking about. Again, we're a little bit late. We're realizing we should just hit record all the time. But we started talking about social media. And so this is our musings on social media, on creating versus consuming. And do you want to be more of a creator on social or do you want to be more of a consumer and how we found we deal with it? We also talk about if you don't want to see your newsfeed on Facebook, but you want to go on Facebook, how we both handle that. Uh, we talk a fair bit about Clubhouse as well, which is kind of not as hot anymore, but it is the hot new social media platform. And um, I've dived quite deep into it for a while and I've held back a bit, but jump into the episode to learn more about why. So that's what this episode's about. We're talking about social media, the good, the bad, the ugly. We'll probably have future episodes about social media because it is a hot topic that we are both very fascinated psychologically as well as business wise for social media. Pete, anything you want to add about what they should know about this episode before we just go straight in? Nothing apart from we're just two dudes trying to work out how to run businesses and also post cool pics on our socials. You know, we want to be loved. We want to be liked like everyone. We want that sweet, sweet dopamine. And so how can you do that in a healthy way as well as getting good business results and not spending all of your days, 24 hours a day on Clubhouse like Carl admitted to doing later in the episode You'll have to wait to the clubhouse section to hear about that. So uh, let's get into it. So um, so the, the, I think there's an interesting thing with social. Oh God, and there's so much, there's like so much to expand here. One is we create our own hive mind, right? And this is very much like a Joe Dispenza thing, right? We, we have the ability to curate what we receive. And I'm very diligent about curating what I receive on like what YouTube channels I follow, or who I follow on Instagram. Number one, because there's just so much noise. And number two, because, you know, like I can literally shape my thoughts and my reality based on the stories that I'm telling myself from what I'm consuming. And so we were talking earlier before we hit the record button about I'm following a lot of accounts around um, uh, addiction recovery and like 12 step and recovering from, you know, toxic relationships and all those kind of things on my Instagram. And yet when I follow that content, it's telling myself the story that I'm broken and I need heal or could be telling myself the story that I'm broken or I need healing or I'm a victim. Uh, and so I'm very careful with that. And I think the interesting thing, Carl, you know, as we float between the different channels that we have is there's, and James Shramko said this to me, there's a difference between being a creator and a consumer. Uh, and they have two very different modes. And, you know, I'm a creator on Facebook. I do not consume Facebook very, very deliberately. Um, and so like I've had my newsfeed disabled for five years using a Chrome plugin. I don't have it running on my phone. And so Facebook is just the place where I go to post and, and share content, right? But every now and again, I actually want to consume, which is an interesting conundrum. And so an experiment that I've just recently started is I've had my PA go through all of my 5,000 friends and she's unfollowing every single person. And there's about five or 10 people who I actually want to follow, not my family or my friends. Wow. Sorry, mate, I'm not going to follow you unless you you know really pick up your, your writing a bit more frequently on there. Um, but my family and friends, I want to call and I want to text and I want to have more human connection with them. I don't give a shit what they put on Facebook because frankly, I don't care. I want to call them and I want to hear about their day by asking them, not from what they put on the internet. Instagram, I still follow family, obviously, but Facebook is different. And I want to consume from just a very small handful of people on Facebook. And so that's that's my experiment in curating wow. Facebook. But then, you know, I go to Instagram, which is kind of like part sharing, part consuming. It's part business because people who follow me because I'm a businessman and because I'm a tech influencer inevitably want to connect with me on a human level. And they go to my Instagram and they're going to see like spiritual memes and they're going to see me jet skiing and doing all this stuff. It doesn't look like what a normal business person in quotes, Instagram looks like. And so, you know, I've had this like kind of curiosity about, well, 
is there a value in me positioning myself as more of an influencer on Instagram? I would need to change the nature of what I publish a little bit to, you know, maybe attract more fans or follow certain hashtags or look in a certain way or pitch my services more. And honestly, I just don't care to. And so I'm, I'm going to kind of continue doing like what feels good for me. And right now, posting business content on YouTube, because that's how I like to share my businessy stuff is what I like doing. We have a business account for our company where my team shares stuff there, but it just doesn't get the engagement that my personal profiles get. And so this whole, you know, social is, is very, very, very interesting to me because I come at it from the lens, not of being in it. Like I'm, I'm not in it. I'm not in the, like, I need social validation. I mean, yeah, sure. Everyone loves the dopamine of sharing something and getting heaps of likes. Right. But I'm not like, in that as my identity i've stepped away from that i've got the meta awareness of this is a channel and this is a platform and i can choose to engage it in it in a healthy way the lens that i look at it through right now is how is this serving my life what is this bringing in for me and what i'm choosing to consume and how i'm choosing to interact with it is this helping my day is this bringing me more to presence or is it taking me away from presence and so half of my instagram is on what i'm working on currently in my personal development mm. and the other half of it is like uh, you know, there's a few meme accounts and those kind of things, but there's also, uh, you know, like um, uh, Buddhist quotes uh, and, you know, quotes from other teachers and leaders. And I follow Jim Carrey because I really love, uh, you know, how he sees the world and, and what he posts about. Um, and so it very easily, it's easy to get into this trap of like social media is good or bad. And, you know, those concepts don't even exist anyway, but I don't see it as good or bad. It's just, you know, another tool for connection and you can be very very intentional about how you choose to connect with it mm. well like it's interesting because you know just for context if you're listening like or well, you are listening otherwise you wouldn't be hearing my voice right otherwise now we're speaking to ourselves. <laughs> is the cat well, in the box i think alive, i think we're often talking exist? to ourselves pete it's we're often just talking podcast. To ourselves. <laughs> but one of the things that came up is i we would firstly pete was sharing some of that and i was like well just post what you want don't don't you don't need to be a uh, you know an influencer with all these business quotes because that's what i've started posting it started because i was like hey i noticed you've been liking a lot of my stuff on instagram because i finally have someone posting for me i had all this content but no one was posting because i for whatever reason have stories that i don't like social media uh like pete i don't have facebook app installed on my phone i will very rarely go on facebook on my phone through safari and i have a content blocker app installed on my iPhone that means that I don't see the news feed. Uh, if I access it on a website, I have a content blocker, so I don't see the news feed. Um, the challenge I was saying is like, I've got, I posted the same content. I, I've been very rare on Facebook and I posted this story. If you look at my Instagram or Facebook recently, I got the story about a, a bracelet that I got in 2019 from a Buddhist monk and how it broke over a year and a half later. And I posted on Instagram and I posted the exact same story on Facebook. And what was really interesting is that I had about three comments on Instagram. I don't remember how many likes, I didn't really pay that much attention. But then on Facebook, I had like 160 something likes and 30 odd comments. And I've also noticed that if I do a story on Facebook Messenger versus Instagram, I get far more replies, engagement, likes on Facebook. So clearly I have a really engaged audience on Facebook, but I personally have this, almost anxiety I've had in the past, maybe not now, of going on Facebook because I feel like people want me. They want a piece of me. And I go, ah, oh. and like, I Is go on Facebook. they're like hitting you up on DMs or because yeah, they're, they're hitting me on Facebook messages. They're yeah, tagging right. me in groups or even if they're not tagging me in groups, I'm in some really, you know, big mastermind groups that have Facebook groups. And um, to be honest, sometimes I read the posts of what people are doing and they've got different business model to me and I can then feel comparison and feel like, oh, I wish I had their life. I wish I had their business. The stuff that we've heard about, a lot of people do on social media. They look at someone's stuff and they, they're comparing their lives and going, well, this is not good. And so I've noticed that. So I've purposely distanced myself from Facebook in particular, whereas Instagram, I don't have that problem. Instagram, I'm seeing you know, quotes from the holistic psychologist or Tony Robbins or Tony Robbins' son, you know, like I, I'm seeing these great, uh, T.R. Becker, all these people, I'm seeing these great um, quotes and things that are interesting. And then I follow a few friends, um, my partner, obviously, I like seeing her stuff. But even that, I rarely go on Instagram to consume. I'm far more, I just have the content being posted. Um, I'll notice if I get a story and I'll maybe share that story that I've been tagged in. 
And so this is the challenge of going, well, if we use them as outlets, I'm getting clear data that Facebook is a better business because most of my friends on Facebook are business owners. It's a better business tool. I get far more engagement connection there than I am currently on Instagram. Whereas all my attention at the moment is going on posting on Instagram because I can outsource that. It's harder to outsource personal profile stuff. And um, so Pete, maybe I will get a bit more uh, current with my uh, regular on my, my comments and posting. But at the moment, Facebook is a drive-by. I go in, I posted that and I left. I didn't look mm. at anything. I only found out today that I had 30 comments and I posted that last week. It was only because I was like, oh, actually, I, my partner said to me, oh, you've had quite a few comments on it. I was like, oh, I should go and look at what those comments are. So mm. um, it is interesting to social media can be really powerful as a business tool. I told Pete that the other day I did a story which had a link to a, an old Udemy course I did on buying businesses and someone bought it. I made a sale. Maybe I made a few sales, but I know at least one person bought it. Hey, that was cool. Um, but, you know, it's, 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 it's definitely a place that I go for less consumption and more creation now. But there is a part of me that feels like, well, hold on, I'm not really connecting because the power of things like, I loved Clubhouse. I haven't been on Clubhouse now in a long time. I wasted way too much time on it. Um, maybe I'll get back on it. Who knows? Twitter now has got their own version of Clubhouse though. So it, it, I like that because it was personal connection. You had to be present. You're on the call. You're listening to someone. You're, you're replying to them. Clubhouse had that presence and connection that I really loved. You're not just posting crap. Instagram, you can connect and I am connecting through my content, I guess, but I don't personally feel overly connected to those people at the moment based on my strategy. And that's maybe I just need to go, well, it's a tool to draw in the people who eventually get on a platform to connect. But it's just so interesting how Facebook, social media and the world, knowing how we interact with it, the point you made about, do you want to be a creator or a consumer and how do you blend those two? I think that's super valuable. Um, I don't really have much more to say about it. I think like, you know, like this is a good musings on social media and maybe it's a short episode. Pete, you got anything you want to add? Well, I, I've got a curiosity about Clubhouse and around being strategic. Um, I noticed something really, really important uh, with working with my team recently around how we produce content. And that is that I really shine in a live environment, um, you know, hence us just hitting record to the kind of, you know, general natural conversation flow that we have. Um, and, uh, you know, I've, I've done a lot of speaking on stage. It's just naturally how I work. If I need to like sit in front of a camera and record a video for youtube it'll take me half an hour whereas i can hit live and just be completely comfortable presenting to a live audience uh, and so that's just how i do things and so the secret to us producing content and getting lots and lots of content produced and up onto youtube because that's been one of the channels that's been really great for us and we wanted to produce more content but we had this problem that i wasn't that great at doing the videos what we ended up doing was now we record one live per week and that's like 30 to 45 minutes and then the team will actually chop that up into sections and release that as three or four different videos. Smart. And so that means that every week we've got two or three at least videos uh, that we can publish to our channel. And so my curiosity was, uh, Carl, if we opened up a clubhouse room and each time we decided to uh, record content together, we were live in clubhouse. We also happened to record the audio tracks and had them go into the podcast the conversation is probably going to flow pretty similarly because it's now that we're in the flow of recording episodes, it's seldom that we would need to actually stop and scrub something out. And I'm curious if we would be able to keep crowd control enough uh, of whoever else was in the room and keep it in a, let's say a show format where we're presenting and we're inviting questions. Uh, I'm curious if that would, um, you know, still translate as, engaging and punchy enough for a podcast where you know some of the things we do on a podcast is you know we prepare for it with bullet points from time to time um and so you know how would that translate into something like clubhouse uh that you know if we had five bullets of things we wanted to talk about would that uh, would that translate well um and so yeah i'm really curious about platforms like that uh and for me it's really about you know efficiency and different types of engagement. Some customers want to be on the live and they don't want to watch the pre-recorded stuff because, you know, they're only ever going to jump into things when they've got the excitement of the moment or they, you know, just happen to stumble across what you've got. Whereas for others, um, you know, they don't want to jump on the live, but they just want the cliff notes or they want the edited shortened version or they want to jump on YouTube so they can watch it in double speed. And I'm more of that kind of consumer, uh, which is why 
I don't really listen to podcasts and I don't really listen to, like I, I didn't really hang around much on Clubhouse because for me, I'd rather get like the summary or the cliff notes on the, um, uh, you know, on, on YouTube or, or somewhere where I can listen to it at double speed. And, you know, like we've had conversations around consuming books. Do you listen to it on Audible and go really, really deep into the, you know, the full book or do you get the blink and get through it in 10 minutes? Uh, if you get the blink and you didn't really enjoy it, are you maybe missing out on what could be in the deeper experience of actually going through and, uh, you know, reading or listening to the book? And, um, uh, you know, I'm constantly reminded that we only have so much bandwidth. And as soon as I go into the fear of not consuming everything, or I sign up to three or four courses at the same time, which is, you know, typically the fashion for me when I'm in growth mode on a particular subject or area in my life, uh, you know, what I find is very quickly, I don't enjoy my experience um, because there's just, you know, too many things happening. Um, and so it comes back to that principle of saying no, it's being able to say no for yourself, yeah. allowing yourself to so have true. idle time. And, uh, you know, wow, how, how easy is it for us to fill our schedule with oh, 100%. all kinds of engagement and exciting, exciting things. So dude, there were a couple of uh, more than a couple. There were a number of questions that you posed and I don't know if they were rhetorical questions or you were looking for answers to, but a couple of things I wanted to, to flag. Um, could we take what we do here on and put it on clubhouse? I think that's an interesting thing. And I've thought about it for those who haven't used clubhouse. There's no native way to record. It's a live medium, at least at the moment. Um, so you've got to record separately. You've got to find some way of jigging up system. So you're live on clubhouse and then you're recording elsewhere. It's also audio only. There's no video. Pete and I, you might be listening in an audio form, but we are, um, we are do record a video as well. And, um, that's so that's one thing I, I also have found that the best clubhouses I've been in the club the rooms have been people started with thinking they had structure and then it just goes all over the place because new people come up and they ask questions and I've sat literally I spent days on clubhouse I spent days on clubhouse I went to bed I slept but I didn't leave clubhouse I woke up and I came back I just was muted I was one of the speakers and I just was muted and I came back when I woke what up is a clubhouse 12 step program <laughs> Oh yeah. It's, it, I, I had to push myself off it because I was like, I'm spending too much time because I wanted to be present. I, I, other people can be on clubhouse and doing other things, listening to it like the radio and then chiming in my brain for whatever reason, just doesn't work like that. I, if I'm listening, I'm listening and I'm doing nothing else. And, and so I, I think we could experiment if you wanted to try it, but I think the best part of clubhouse is actually the engagement. They're able to have a conversation. Someone asks a question, someone adds something to the conversation. So it's, that's the value I found in clubhouse. I liked it. I connected with people all around the world that I would not have normally met. You get to meet mutual friends, similar to if you were doing an experience in events, that's what I liked about it. You go to an event and you're like, Hey, I know my mate, Mike over here and I, you know, Pete and someone else knows you. So they've joined the room. And then they're, they're an awesome person and they get promoted to a speaker. And then all of a sudden we get to have a bit of a chat we've never met before. And now we've built a connection and then we might do some business or who knows what else on the back end, purely because we got that way of introduction like you would in an event in the real world, but it got facilitated through, um, through clubhouse. And I got to connect it's with one of my- to open our own clubhouse room, Carl. <laughs> this is going to happen. The entrepreneurs well, rising clubhouse. Maybe we'll let's see if we can open it. I don't know if you, how to open a club, but yeah, I got to connect with one of my early mentors, Brad Sugar. I hadn't spoken to me. He joined a clubhouse room. I brought him up as a speaker because I was a, I was one of the speakers. He added amazing value. I hit him up on Instagram. We had a chat. Now we follow each other on Instagram. Like it's just, it's really cool. And that wouldn't have happened without something like clubhouse. So there is value but it is time consuming. I haven't figured it and nailed out how to use it well without it being addictive. Um, there were other questions you asked, but I've already forgotten what they are. So, well, I, I, I've, I'm curious, like, I mean, it seems you've been uh, consuming a lot on there and also, you know, at the same time sharing, um, you know, and it's, it's, it's really only one X speed when you're consuming. And to me, you know, to me, to me, that's the challenge. Like the but way the that I- yeah, and there's and, no leverage you know, to the sharing because there's no recording. You can't create content that gets leveraged like you, my social media content, all those quotes and images you see. I did mm -hmm. one big day of recording one long video. It got split up into little videos and became quote cards. It became video snippets. Clubhouse is live. It's done once. You say it and it's gone. It's not leveraged oh, for people like yeah, us. Yeah, but there's ways to jig, you know, through recording and and I, I wouldn't do it unless there was, I, I wouldn't do it unless we'd set up to record and be able to actually keep that content. Like, and I understand the, you know, the ephemeral nature of it 
is uh, you know part of the attraction, um, but I think it would just go to waste unless there is a room there full of your customers. It's kind of like BNI or LinkedIn or any of the the other channels that we have available to us. If you're not actually getting you know results or customers there or some kind of brand exposure or some kind of networking or LinkedIn or some kind of value exchange, then why are you there? If you're there for entertainment, awesome, great. Um, but I I don't need more consumption. I've got mm. plenty of courses. I've got plenty of practices. I've got plenty of books that books that I'm reading, and that's why when I you know saw it, I was like, oh yeah, okay, this is cool. I listened to Elon Musk who was uh, interviewing the GameStop CEO, uh, which was exciting to listen live. That that excitement gave me some value there. Uh, but after that, I lost a bit of interest. But I wouldn't be opposed to being a creator on the platform. I think I'd really enjoy that. You totally would, man. Let's give it a go. We'll try it out. I don't, it might not be by next episode, guys, but we will have a future episode that was recorded on a clubhouse and you'll get to experience how it went. <laughs> Look at that. Look out for that on our social channels. And speaking of social channels, uh, search for Entrepreneurs Rising on Instagram, on Facebook, and you'll get access to our shows there. We will at some stage be uploading all of our back catalog with video to YouTube as well. If you're kind of visual person and you want to see our pretty faces on your screen, uh, you can totally do that. Uh, but until then, check out all of our audio only back catalogs at rising.show. That's not .com, that's rising.show. If you would like to, we would love you to leave us a review. Uh, just head along to your podcasting platform of choice. If you love us, give us five stars. If not, that's fine. We love any and all feedback. And until next time, you stay safe. Be good. Carl, thanks so much for joining me. Yeah, see you guys. See you soon.